Hello and welcome back to Building on a Budget Models. I'm Thomas and this is the full build video of the Fujimi new Mini Cooper in 124th scale. Now I got this kit as a bronze tier mystery box from Kent Models. Basically you pay a certain amount and you're guaranteed to get a kit worth that amount or slightly more. This is for a mystery box build off which uh, the hashtag is down in the description below. Now the body comes molded in red like this and it's pretty good. There's only a few mold lines. Most of them like this one along the roof line are kind of built into the panel lines of the car. I used my UMP sanding sticks to sand those down. I gave it three coats of white Tamiya fine primer and then two coats of Tamiya NATO brown. Now this is a matte finish paint which looks okay but uh, I will later be going over with a gloss coat. This colour was also picked at random for me. Now then the window trims can be done at this point because many of them need to be in gloss black so I brush painted them with Revell matte black and later the gloss coat will go over the top. Now then you need to drill out the correct holes here for the windscreen wipers gives you options for right or left hand drive windscreen wipers which is odd because this kit only comes with right hand drive dashboard. As you can see here the decals come for either the Mini 1 or the Mini Cooper. I decided to put down these uh, white Cooper stripes on the bonnet before the gloss coat so that they had the same glossy finish as the rest of the body. Sadly they only come in white so if you wanted to do a finish with like black Cooper stripes or something like that you would have to get uh, decals or from somewhere else or paint them. There's no moulded detail for the badges so you just need to make sure that you position them in the right place on the front and the back. They're identical. Make sure you don't position the back one too low. There's also a little silver Cooper logo or you can use the one logo. Painted the fuel cap in the same so that I cross coated this all at the same time and here it is. I think that that is a pretty big transformation. Really happy with how this looks after four coats of Tamiya TS13 Gloss Clear. After a week of letting it cure I gave it a polish with Kent Models Hyper Polish. Now for the chrome trim that goes around the underside of the windows I decided to use plumber's aluminium tape. So I did this in sections, firstly adding some Tamiya tape, pushing it into place using my finger and a cotton bud. Then pushed the tape into place using the cotton bud as well and then got a brand new craft blade to cut out the excess along the edge. It's important to fold this over on the inside. Obviously for this job you could paint it or you could use bare metal foil instead. Peel it away very slowly so as to not peel up the uh, tape that you left, leave behind. Now the bumpers on the front and the rear come in separate parts. These had already been painted in uh, the brown paint and then the gloss coat. I used Revell matte black for the uh, bumper parts. Did most of this freehand. I also found that you could correct any mistakes by scratching off excess paint with a toothpick. On the body I found curved masking tape from Tamiya very useful for these wheel arches. It would be more helpful if they were moulded as separate parts, but never mind. I test fitted the front and rear bumpers, however you can leave these off until mounting to the chassis. 
pretty happy with that. I think the colour looks pretty uniform. This early model of the Mini had these vents in front of the uh, chrome trim, so I used some semi-gloss black from Ravel to hand brush those in. Helpfully, the roof comes as a separate part, moulded in white. You can just leave that in the bare plastic if you really wanted to. However, I did go over it with some gloss white from Tamiya. The chrome parts are very nicely moulded. For some reason, the front grille was moulded in two parts for the early mini models like this one here. Then there's other chrome features like this uh, kind of bumper part on the rear. These were fitted into place using super glue. I went back and painted the inside of the grill housings black and then glued down the grills after doing that. The underside was done entirely in matte black and then I did accents such as the engine and exhaust system in silver or flat aluminium. There are three options for the exhaust tips, either the dual exhaust that appears on the Cooper S or the uh, standard Cooper or Mini 1 exhaust. I went for the Cooper exhaust here. I don't think the dual tip would actually work with the exhaust pipe that's fitted with this kit. I attached those together, painted them silver and then used some black panel line accent. Now the brakes I painted in silver and then used red to help the calipers stand out. You put a poly cap in there and then you uh, use a little bit of glue to the outside and then attach them to the axles. The axles already have the suspension parts attached. These were all supposed to be black, however I added some different colours just to help them stand out. Once these are all secured and cured, you can clip this little arm on. There's also these little caps which go at the bottom to kind of help ease them turn. Don't glue these parts together so that the wheels can still steer. This bracket then goes onto top to clip them into place, allowing the two front wheels to turn easily. There's a spare wheel holder which goes underneath the boot and then the rear axles go in in very much the same way as the front except that there's no steering mechanism. These ones can be glued though as they don't need to turn. After these have been attached you can then do the exhaust. Now the door cards have this gap in the middle that means that they will show the colour from the inside of the bodywork. Bear that in mind. I did all of this in matte black and then added some silver accents with a very fine brush, such as around the speakers and the uh, door handle. I did some gloss black around the outside of the hole in the middle and then did this kind of armrest pad in the same wood brown from Ravel as I would do the seats in. The dashboard I kept mainly in semi-gloss black but added some accents in silver. There are many decals to go on the interior. For instance, you can either choose to give the car a sat nav like I've done here or you can use the uh, center for the speedo. Now 
Now the steering wheel here has a black circular decal with the mini badge that goes in the middle. So I chose to paint the entire circle in the center silver and then add the decal over the top. There are two options for the pedals, either a two pedal automatic or three pedal manual. There are seatbelt sockets and also isofix in the back, which I left black in the seats and also used a little bit of red on the top of the seatbelt sockets. As you can see here, I used this wood brown as an accent color for the interior on the seats and also around the gear stick and handbrake. These all glue in very nicely. A little bit of Tamir Thin around the edge and these fit in very well. Test fit these parts first. You've got this metal mesh which goes behind this uh, hole at the front. Be very careful with this as the edges are very sharp tells you in the instruction manual how big to cut it out. I used some nail scissors to do this. I'm supposed to keep this the plain silver metal colour and then I used a little bit of Gorilla Glue gel to fit it into place. There's a few more chrome parts that go on the front. And also this one that goes above the number plate housing on the boot. This one's a bit fiddly, so be very careful. You might want to test fit it before adding glue. Now there are two options for the headlights. One of them is for the Cooper S. I'm using the standard ones here. Use a little bit of contact clear to fit the lenses into place. I did this on the sprue so that it was a lot easier when fitting them onto the bodywork. I also used contact clear here as I knew that it wouldn't damage the paint. I decided to add a little bit more detail, so I used some black ribbon here, cut it to length, and then used some more super glue to fit it into place as a seat belt. Did this for all four seats. And then finally glued this all together. Now the wheels come in white plastic. I just did a couple of coats of pure white from Tamiya. The tyres have got a pretty substantial mould seam down the middle, so I gave those a bit of a sand first. And then they've got some mini decals that go in the middle, and I also painted the wheel nuts in iron. The polycap goes into the wheel like so, before you mount it onto the body. A little small amount of twisting and it fits on really well. I then masked around the edge of the roof and brush painted on some semi-gloss black for the rubber trim. I have to be very careful when doing this. Now the tail lights need to be red with an orange circle in the centre. Did this using a sharpie and then contact to clear, glued them onto the chrome housings and then super glued them into place. Rear view mirror here goes into place on the bodywork. There's also some sun visor detail here which I just painted in brown. Door handles are also from the chrome sprue.
There are four fog lights that go at the front. I painted the back of these in silver acrylic to start with. Then again, used a little bit of contact clear and pushed them into place using either a toothpick or the tweezers. Pretty happy with that. There's also a small fog light at the back. The windows have sprue points in very unfortunate places, so I tried to remove them as carefully as possible and sand them away gently. It doesn't come with window masks, so instead I used some Tamiya tape along some of the straight edges and then used Revell matte black in those places. Then moved the tape around and did the other edges as well. Pretty happy with how it looks, not perfect. I then used a bit of Bob Smith Super Gold on the end of a cotton bud around the edge. This is a foam safe super glue, so I'm happy with how it turns out. I then added a building on a budget models decal to the rear window. And also there's a few Japanese tax discs and things like that that come with the set. The rear window really is difficult to put into place after the side window, so you might want to put that one in first. There's the wipers in place. And then this is much easier to mount to the body without the front and rear bumpers. There's a couple of clips at the back and some at the front as well. This doesn't need to be glued, which is nice. It means that you can pin it up again in the future should you want to. It's important to paint this part at the front in a dark colour as I've done here as you'll see through that through the hole in the grill. Then once it's in place I used a little bit of glue to fit these side skirts which were also done in matte black. They are slightly different so make sure you get them the right way around. Now there's three different options for the front and rear number plate, as it comes with Japanese style number plates or the Mini Cooper or Mini One plates, you need to think carefully about what you're going to use. Now this one here is designed to cover up some of the number plate gap with a body colour. Also the wing mirrors were done in white with a little bit of matte black. They glue into place really nicely. Now a nice feature about some of these Fujimi kits is that they come with customizable number plates. Tell me in the comments if you know why I did 59 to 00. zero. And there we have it. I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out. I think considering I ended up with a matte colour paint for this, the fact that I've been able to clear coat it and then polish it up to a really nice shine, I think uh, is something I can be really happy about. It's a nice little kit. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of the new Mini but I still think that uh, it's gone together really nicely and it's another nice kit for my collection.